Hello, Art Appreciation Classmates. We are moving on to the next lesson, which is Lesson 9. Uh, for the previous unit or the previous lesson, we have studied music, music and tune or music as art. And even if we weren't able to really focus on classical art, I hope that you will dedicate time, maybe during your STEM break or during your short term when you have more time or even in between your classes. It's also a very good way for you to, to you know, um, Put yourself out there and uh, do something else that's not really re um, that's not really school school related, but it will develop to your professional and personal goals or personal and professional development. So try to study um, how how you know musical how musical instruments work. What are the different who are the different uh, classical artists and how do we recognize or how do we how do we how do we listen? What is the right way or what is the best way for us to listen to these different uh, these different tunes? Now, um, I, of course, it's also very essential that we know how to critique music, and that's what we've been focusing on. Because aside from this is art appreciation, and it's all about trying to look into the themes, study the study messages, and study how to how to create a cogent and how to create a an evidence-based and very good understanding and critique of art, we are supposed to also appreciate the things that we are exposed to every day. So because pop music is something that is fast, uh, you know, it's um fa it's evolving very fast. There are new, there are new, you know, new artists every now and then, new sounds, new a lot of things. It's very important you're, that you are you are geared and you are taught to criticize or for you to listen to them properly. So whenever you listen to a song or when you are listening to, when you are listening, when there is a new album that comes out or you have a new art, yeah, there's a new artist, I hope you will always say like, anong sabi ni Sir Ian about this or what do I remember from art appreciation? So I hope that these are things that will stick with you uh, for the rest of your days. It will be something that will be innate already. Na basta nakarinig tayo, like, that's actually my personal goal as a teacher. I'll be very happy to let you go, to let you off from art appreciation, knowing that whenever you see a piece of art or a piece of work, or whenever you when you ever you listen to music, when you watch a movie, when you watch a dance, when you watch a dance performance, you know how to critique or you know how to understand it, or you know how to make up your mind and create an opinion about it. Even if the opinion is just very short or yeah, but at least you know how to make one. And I hope that that's what I was able to teach you for the previous semi, um, for the previous months. And I hope that it's the same thing for the way that you listen to music uh, starting, starting this month, okay? Starting the first time that we talked about music. So this time we're letting go of all of those things already. We are moving away from your visual art, from your um, art, from your music, and now we are going into art and man, and now focusing into the identity of the artist. We've actually done this. That's why I ask you to. That's why I let you watch uh, Matisse, because um, I know that time was running fast, and uh, Matisse is a very good study for. It's a very he's a very good study for, for art because of course um, he's one of those artists that were not really embraced when his art first came out. It's very um, there are many people who are like him who are very famous right now. And of course, on top of the list will be Van Gogh, right? Um, Goya, and of course we also have him, Henry Matisse. Although although Henry Matisse is. Uh, uh, also appreciated naman during, there were some people who believed in his work. As you can see, like Siniak and the other artists, they believed in him and they invested in him. And it was a right thing to do because right now we are, um, you know, we we appreciate him. And for me personally, as an art viewer and as an art student, Matisse is my favorite artist. Matisse is my, Matisse is my vibe as a, as a person. All right, so... Enough with that. We're moving on forward. Let's talk about your, your lesson nine. It's actually the penultimate lesson before your final lesson next week. and uh, Or this Friday, I mean. So we have Art and Man. We'll talk about your identity marks, soul making, categories of soul making, and the seven division principles. How do you know if you learn from this lesson or from this unit? The first thing is you need to know how to conceptualize how artists affirm their own identity. Number two is to interpret ways how people go through a creative process. And the third one, 
very importantly, is for you to demonstrate this creativity through a creative output. And we're going to talk about that later on all right so as you can see there's a vision board project in your module you are going to do that so i think i've told you this already in the first grading that most of the writing and then the heavy parts are in the first grading and midterms because we reserve the 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 creative part or the more output based part towards the finals especially with the use of materials or medium this is also i think very timely because you have a lot of things to do right now and i know that of course art takes time but um, i think that the tasks for midterms are much easier to much easier to address or to do in the finals compared to what you um compared to the compared to the things that you are compared to the things that you are working on or to the things that you are you are doing for the for um from for the for the rest of the semester. All right, so those are the things that we are going to look into for our for our lesson nine. Okay, so for art and man, of course, uh, you can see in here uh, the Mona Lisa or the La Jaconda. Now, guys, there are three artworks which are very well known or which are very recognizable from the western world okay from our area dito sa asia what do you think i'll give you a few seconds to think but it's the great wave of kanagawa okay by hokusai so the great wave of kanagawa is the most uh, most uh, recognizable from our end but in the western world there are three the first one being uh, of course the mona lisa the second one, of course, as you already know, is Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. And the third is Edvard Monk. Yes, it's The Scream. So those are the three very well-known or three most recognizable artworks in the Western world. Uh, the Mona Lisa or La Gioconda, The Starry Night, and The Scream. So yun yung tatlo, okay? So I always remember those. Okay, so why is identity very important? Because... You know, artists are, when you talk about art, identity is very important because it's uh, it's the way, aside from it's an expression, of course, or art is a form of expression and, um, uh, you know, as a, as a form of, of message or of communication, artists are affirming the identity with their art. When you see an artwork, you can already have a clear idea who this is. Who did this? That's why your for your case study for the for the finals, what we did was I let you watch a documentary on Henry Matisse. I wish we had more time because when we were, if we're inside the classroom, actually, I usually hold around three to four every semester. But because of the online, because of online classes, and I know that it's, you know, I know that you have a lot of things to do already. Ayoko nang ising it because it will be an additional burden or, burden or additional task for you. But uh, usually, who are these artists that I, that I discuss so that maybe you can take notes and then you can read them on your own? We have, of course, Henry Matisse. Henry Matisse is my favorite artist. That's why I love talking about his works. Um, I'm very much in love with the cutouts, the color. There's something that's strange about about his work that uh, that you know that um, pulled me to him, even when I was a child. So I I it was um, you try to go online and then look for the for the painting the dancers. That's one of the first paintings that I have been reading in when I was a child. In, in art books in the library. And then it's something that stuck with me. And when I was older to understand what it really meant, it it was like it was like a very transcendental experience for me because you know there are many things that we see around us when we are younger, when we are kids, but they don't really make sense. But we do appreciate them. And what's good is that you can see the value of an artwork because the more that you the, the more that you grow, the more that you experience life, and the more that you go through life, you're able to add something, you you add a notch or you add something to the to the understanding or to the value of that artwork. So if you're telling me, for example, that your favorite painting is the Mona Lisa, I am sure that there is something will change every now and then inside of you whenever you see that. Like um, maybe this time there is, uh, you know, you didn't, um, you, you already, you feel like you know stuff about the painting, but your understanding of the painting gets deeper and deeper and uh, becomes more, uh, 
it comes into a bigger fruition once you once you are maturing as well. So those are some of the things that makes art very important. The mark that our artists leave with them. Amor Solo, for example, his works are very recognizable, right? Matisse, the other artist that I discussed with you and um, that I wanted to discuss, but we didn't have enough time was Frida Kahlo. No, very amazing. Um, of course, everyone's supposed to know her because that's why I know, but uh, it was good that I was able to present to you even even if if just for a little while. Um, Kuzama Yayoi, of course. And uh, another one was, I wanted to talk about the about performance art sana, but we didn't really have enough time. But I'm just glad that we're able to cover many of the artists and paintings and topics that I wanted to share with you in relation to the syllabus of our, of our course. Now, identity, of course, is the way we perceive and express ourselves. But factors and conditions that an individual is born with, like your gender, I sorry, your sex, not gender, your body, your ethnic heritage, sometimes even your religion, diba? Um, for example, there are many of us here whose religions were actually chosen for us by our parents. So they play a role in defining our identity. So you can also see or you can sense uh, a little bit about the person or the artist when you look at their works. Uh, did, for example, um, as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, my artwork, of course, or my 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 literary works, my creative works, reflect this kind of these kinds of themes as well. And I think that it's not just because you know you want to be you want to be part of the conversation, but you want to keep this alive. You want to show that you're also able to contribute and you're also able to assert yourself by presenting this kind of work out there. I think that is very, very important for us to, to perceive and to understand. So I hope that because you are already student, um, you, are, you are finishing with art appreciation, that art is supposed to be an area for understanding, not for judgment. Because I don't want my students in the future to be judging other people at, or at, yeah, based on their art. I want my students to be more understanding of other people because of art. Yun yung trabaho natin or yun yung, <clears throat> that's actually the work that I, that, that I am also setting myself to do. So conversely, our identities also influence the decisions that we make. Of course, our um, you know, our friends, our the way we the way we clothe, clothe ourselves, you know, the, our political beliefs, even our religions, even our gender, <clears throat> right? All of this, all of these have more to do with our with our experiences. Of course, the very first male cover for Vogue is Harry Styles, which came out during this pandemic, and it's also one of the most controversial because he donned uh, a woman's outfit, and I think that's a very strong political. Um, it's a very political statement to make. It's very good. Uh, it's it was able to steer a conversation. It was able to make people suddenly become more aware and become more uh, more exposed to something. So when people think, I think that's a very good thing. Pag nag-iisip ang mga tao, pag challenge sila. All right. So. Um, da Vinci is considered a genius and his works transcend time and cultures. So as you can see what are the, um, of course, but that's something that I cannot discuss now. Maybe you can go online and then try to see what are the cultural markers that you can see with, um, you can see in the Mona Lisa. Okay, so <clears throat> again, let's talk about soul making. Uh, there. So when you talk about soul making, I will be dividing my talk into two. The first one will be right now. And then the second one will be for really in relation to lesson 10 as well. So for, for this part, I will be already putting all together soul making, appropriation, and improvisation. So let's talk about soul making. It is an alternative venue for knowing ourselves and looking into the depths and real meaning of what we are doing for everyday life. So when you're talking about soul making, it is a form of crafting stories or transforming brief moments into images and symbols. It's about trying to assert a form of narrative. So you connect with people, you understand culture, and you embody tolerance and peace. You develop the artist in you. You awaken the art in you that has been stagnant or underdeveloped for numerous years. And it opens door for multiple intelligences of expression. Okay, so... <clears throat> um, uh, just a personal sharing because um, 
I think it's, uh, I, I just wanted you to, ano, ano. I was uh, part of a, like a gifted class and then it was one of the different parts of the country. It was one of the first ones to come out from the country because usually science classes, di ba ang alam natin? And then I appreciated this because what they did was they used the, the uh, multiple intelligences theory to accommodate everybody. So for example, I was there for linguistic intelligence. Um, there are some who are in then or who are there for spatial. There are some of some of them who are there for for visual, etc. So <clears throat> I think that acknowledging and knowing a person um a person based on what they can bring to the table is more important than inviting somebody who we think can do everything. And I think that's a very good statement. And I think that's related to soul making as well. Because if you look at those who are very creative, who, those who are very well known, no, they're always sticking to just one. In DC life, um, it's very rare. I mean, there are people who are, who are, who are like this. They, are, they can do everything. They can write. They can write well, they can do maths well, they can dance, you know, perfect, um, perfect everything. And that's totally fine. But when you talk about soul making, it's about trying to develop the artist in you talaga. How are you going to awaken something inside of you that has been stagnant or that you didn't even know existed? And it you know, the, the idea of multiple intelligence is important here because, you know, like, for example, um, whenever I give you a task, I do not know if you're observant that way. I don't say, all of you are supposed to do this. What I do is I give you a theme and I want you to ex explore that. I will not tell you to, all of you, um, when, remember when I give you the task on serial patterns, when you were given a task on serial patterns, you had the opportunity to do whatever you want to do. You can use whatever whatever you want to use. That's an example of bringing out in other people a form of expression. Do not force them to. I want you to do a charcoal. I want you to. I want you to draw with charcoal. Or I don't. I want you all to use. Um. I want you all to use. Uh. I want you all to use a uh, color pens or to use pastel or to use oil. When not everybody of us is inclined to do that. So yun. soul making also is an exploration and application of the imagination in an active way. So when you make your art, an artist or artisan or even an ordinary person utilizes imagination to survive and to live. Going over your works, there are some of you who are always inspiring or surprising me. So whenever I go to the works of your of your of any of the sections that I handle of your section there is always one or two or three or sometimes even around five that will blow my mind when I see it. And I think that's doubly, that's doubly relevant because we are in a pandemic right now and I cannot see you. I cannot gauge who you are because I haven't met you personally, but it's very exciting to look at you or to understand who you are based on the work that you are giving. So I think that one of the things that I can share with you right now based on your outputs is if you know how to exert effort, then your works will really be good. Many of you are good artists, but you are lazy. So it's about, it's about understanding what you are supposed to do, what you want to do, and finding the right medium for it. There are some of you na feel ko yung potential for greatness or for, for a good output, but you are not committing. You are not giving it your all you are just doing it for compliance sake and that is sad because when you talk about soul making it is about imagination how am i going to do something in a creative resourceful and intelligent way so we're talking about where the substance and meaning of the artwork are formed we're talking about materials varies from each individual with diverse experiences based on what they are what are obtained by the senses what are your understanding of what is your understanding of life what is your understanding of the things around you that will help you in defining the kind of work that you want to give so when you talk about soul making here are some different points that i want you to take note the first one is it takes a special skill to hold an image in thought and turn that imagination into art I will be asking you to watch a TED Talk later where you're going to respond, but 
just hold on to this idea, to this thought. Take a special skill. It takes a spe special skill, sorry, to hold an image in thought and turn that imagination into art. It's about a form, it's like a form of translation. The second one is imagination is always dependent on the action and plays a major role in art production. So uh, when you talk about imagination, it's actually like the in the very first part of the process. If there is a scientific process, there is an artistic process. And I believe that the artistic process starts with observation as well. And it leads to imagination. Soul making can be innate gift or a learned skill or a combination of both. So um, there, are, there is also an ongoing debate about, let's go to the next one. It does not require a professional artist or artisan to be involved. There is a debate about, are artists made or are they born? And I, I've also thought about this a lot of times. And one of the things that uh, I reflected upon was when you talk about soul making, when you talk about art and soul making, I think that artists are actually made. So I know that there are some of us who are, maybe all of us really, I think all of us really are, are artists. But I believe that artists are made because many of us, even if we are very good artists, we chose not to do it or we chose not to apply it anymore. And that's a very sad reality. But for those of us who wanted to apply it and to, uh, you know, make it a part of our lives, I think that's a choice. So you made yourself one. That's why I believe that artists are made and they are not really born. Okay, it has no time reference and it occurs any time. You cannot stop an Im from um, you cannot stop imagination when it hits you, and it occurs where there is engagement among the person, time, and space. So you must be at the right place at the right time for this to hit you. Okay. All right. So on talk about soul making. Here are some categories: crafting images. So you are representing in any form. So this can be through painting, sculpting, 2D or 3D, drawing, storytelling, poetry, dancing, composing, or taking notes. That's why also, I do not know if you observe this, but or I'm not sure if I ask you to do this in Art App, but in my purposive comp classes and the major classes that I handle, I actually tell students to have notes tasks which are very creative, just for them to express themselves creatively with the words that they are with words and with pictures. It is rooted in our own personal experiences, our personal encounters and events that triggered our reflection, recall, and judgment. So it's about trying to create something visual. The second one is stories. So the moment we write, engrave, and inscribe our own thoughts, our ideas, commentaries, even your music criticism, your album review, your art criticism, those are still parts of soul making. You know, these are your positive and negative emotions, and we are making stories to share to other people. It becomes our own history that can be handed down to our children and family for the succeeding generations. It becomes a historical and artistic document. Crafting instruments, an instrument maker is a bridge toward the unknown because the instrument produces sounds that transcend our feelings, emotions, and sensation in another realm. The soul is um, accompanied by a vessel, so the soul will not vanish. Um, I will share with you later the, the TED talk of the amazing Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love, if you know the movie or the book. And later on, The Signature of All Things, which is a very good book. You will, you will listen to, to how she went into history or how she studied history to discuss this with us. Yung vessel na sinasabi niya. The soul is accompanied by a vessel so that the soul will not vanish. And transforming any sound, sorry, any found or used object into a musical instrument allows one to discover harmony and balance to produce a sound that is entertaining, enhancing, and magical. All right, so how about movements? Life is full of movements filled with various beats. Life is full of flowing images accompanied by flowing narratives. Everything we do in life is a performance and we perform life. There are many theories about um, owning a space. Uh, Mich Michelle de Sertu is my favorite philosopher for that. Lalo na yung mga Hume sa inyo dati. Um, <clears throat> When we talk about soul making and crafting movements, 
I think this is very important because it's not just a dance. It's about knowing how to assert yourself based on the way that you carry yourself. So your posture, the way that you walk, the way that you deal with other people, all of these are parts of, of this. There's also crafting techniques. Anything can be crafted by using different evocative descriptions of experiences and explorations. Photogra photography studies or photograph studies, puppets, masks, constructions, and notepad studies. When we say studies, it's not a, it's not a course. It's about trying to how to how it's about learning how to create something new out of this. Photography is you know it's the art of capturing light. So it's you have a photo with you, like a selfie. Is there a way that you can manipulate that? That's an example of a study. Is there a way that you can manipulate your is there a way that you can manipulate your photos in a way that they will become unique? Like maybe you can include cutouts to it. Yeah. All right. So finally we have here the framework for genius, how to think like Leonardo da Vinci. This was a study and a book by Michael Belt, and uh, he has here seven, but the one here is in English already. I much prefer the, I much prefer the <clears throat> Italian version. So there is your curiosità, there is your dimostrazione, there is your sensazione, sfumato, arte, scienza, and corporalità and your connessione. So all of these are your seven. These are the seven Da Vinci principles. So <clears throat> when you talk about um according to according to him, according to my um, according to Michael Bell, Michael Gelb, he said that you know um when you talk about when you talk about uh creativity or when you talk about um you know, living a perfect creative life. It has more to do with um it has more to do with the process. And the right person or the best person to embody all of this is Leonardo da Vinci, according to him. So Anjan Lahat Yan. So let's go let's go over that. Curiosita, dimostrazione, sensazione, sfumato, arte, scienza, corporalita. In connessione. So those are the seven according to Gelb. Now, <clears throat> wrong. Okay, so curiosity is your curiosita. That's your curious approach to life and continuous learning. Okay, so um, let's just go over the English na lang and then we'll go back to the Italian. Experiential is your participatory learning. See and do it yourself. Sensory is to sense it. Use it with use your senses. Transfiguration is the willingness to embrace the unknown and to change. Whole brain thinking, of course, is balancing your art and science, the left and the right uh, parts of your brain. When you cultivate grace, fitness, and poise, as I've said a while ago, that's part of it. That's balancing mind and body. And knowingness that all things are interconnected is systems thinking. So when you talk about the curiosita, it's the insatiable, insatiability, this appetite for something new, an unrelenting quest for new knowledge. So um, there are some tips also that are included in here. Of course, there are parts here that will relate it to Leonardo's life, like Leonardo's childlike sense of wonder. Kahit no matanda na siya, he's very curious. Fill your notebooks with questions. So this is basically journaling. I do not know if you keep a journal, but you know, you can get a journal every year, fill it with questions, observations, whatnot. Um, and then when you are older, you try going back to it, diba? I think that's a very nice way to time travel. Demonstrazione is a commitment to test knowledge through experience, persistence, and willingness to learn from mistakes. So exercises are grouped as examined experience, check your beliefs and sources, learn from your mistakes, create affirmations, and learn from anti-role models. Sensazione, on the other hand, is the continual refinement of the senses. So you should know how to develop your senses, especially your sense of sight. That's why in art appreciation, ang tinuturo, ang tinuro ko, for example, sa klase natin is how do you practice looking at the, at, 
at things so that you know how to create your opinion or to have an opinion about it. So Fumato, on the other hand, is... Uh, or music analysis. That's actually an example of sensazione. You are able to practice or you're able to learn how to develop your sense of hearing, to appreciate music. Sfumato, on the other hand, is literally, from the word itself in Italian, going up in smoke, a willingness to embrace ambiguity, that there are things that are not really set in stone. What does that mean? If you already have a journal, Go over it and try to see, no? And dito yung sabi niya, uh, describe the feeling of ambiguity, this, the feeling of anxiety. Where in the body do you experience them? Okay? There's also, of course, the balance of the arts and sciences, arte and, si and scienza, the development of the balance between science and art, logic and imagination, and whole brain thinking. So you use all of the chords of your brain. So Leonardo urged scientists and, urge, and, and artists to go straight to nature in the search of knowledge and understanding. Okay, so I think this is already very clear to you. Just go over your modules if you have more questions. Um, corporalita, on the other hand, corporalita is the cultivation of grace, ambidexterity, fitness, and poise. Ambidexterity meaning... Um, balance on both levels so you develop a regular fitness program you know keep yourself fit or keep yourself healthy study practical anatomy use the alexander technique to relearn poise that is what I said cultivate your ambidexterity and learn how to juggle yung learn how to juggle na sinasabi niya it doesn't really mean about the it's the literal juggling it's like trying to know how to how to be physically active as well. And of course, connessione, it's a recognition of and appreciation for the interconnectedness of all things and phenomena. Systems thinking. So despite the fact that we live in an age of specialization, maintaining an accurate visualization of the grander scheme of things can be particularly worthwhile. All right, so it's very important that we understand all actions, patterns, and relationships around us because they are part of the um, totality of the experience of the human race. So those are the seven um, division principles. Okay, so for your final for your final output for this unit or for this lesson, you're going to be making your own. Uh, you're going to be creating a statement for your uh, seven division principles, and what you're going to do will be a mind map. So I think this is something that's taught to you before. If it's not, I'm going to be including a separate um, a, a video from YouTube to discuss to you what is mind map. There are many things you can find online, but here are some samples from my students last June, July. So this is one. So in your mind map, you're going to create a diagram or you're going to um, just be creative. This is just one of them. Hindi, I'm not telling you that this is the only way. There are different ways actually that you can make or create a, a very good and very strong mind map. So this is one example. As you can see, the different um the seven the, the seven um division principles are executed. So try to reflect how are you going to develop and how are you going to apply in your real life, in your in your life, because you're first year students. This is actually the start of your adulting. So you are first year, then you'll be second year. You know, during our time, we graduated college. We are like almost your age because we were 20, 20, 21. No third year college kami, nag -de na kami ng thesis. So it was that, it was an early, of course, it was a different time then. But I'm just saying that, you know, <clears throat> you're already in a time when you're supposed to be adult, starting to adult also. So this is an example. How are you going to, Try to reflect and try to go over soul making, the ideas of soul making and try to go over the ideas that we talked about earlier today. Try to imagine how are you going to develop and how are you going to, how are you going to apply the seven dimension principles. So here are some samples. This is by Miss Resil, Miss Tuzon. It, it, you can also apply your, you can also actually apply your own, ano, your own art. This is actually handmade. Sinulat niya to. She printed, um, she created something and then she, that's why she also showed her, she, she also showed the process. And then what's nice about this is that it is, what's fun about this is that it's actually a way also for you to reflect and try to, to help you understand what you are, what, what you can do or what you would want to do. 
Uh, this one is also another and this one i like this because there's a form of i know there's a form of coming and going there's a process in here uh, there are parts in here that i didn't understand at first and i will not explain it to you here but it was going over it for a few more minutes that I understood, ah, okay, ito pala siya. So there, um, for the mechanics, there will really be no, um, it, it must be, it can be done online. It's no longer like your first out, your output last week, which is your, uh, which was your art, your album artwork. This time you have an option for you to do it online. But of course, um, this is an example of something that's done online. And these are samples of, those that are done at home, those are done by hand. And this is a sample of something that is done by hand and something that, um, which is developed from something that was done online. So you again, it's the same as your first output. You need to show me your process. You need to show me 25%, 50%, 75% and the final process so that I can see how you went through the, your work process. So this is going to be your output for this. So this is going to be, um, in your module, it said 40 points, I guess, from, from the rubric, ano, yung nakalagay 40 points, but I'm going to see if most of your outputs are really good, then we can raise that to 50. But if it, if, but if it's just, you know, if it meets the standards and it's just okay, then we'll stick to 40, All right? But for now, let's stick it to 40. So it will be 40 points. And then for the next video that I will upload, we will talk about appropriation already. That's our next topic. Okay, so we will have... Here are some, just good to go over the samples again. So same rule apply, finally, same rules again. Show me your process, 25, 50, 75%, and then the final output. So the final output must be, you can separate it actually. So you can just put the process in a, I don't know, in a grid or in one slide or in one photo file. And then the final one must be separate like this. I will appreciate it if it's in PDF or in JPEG, okay? All right, so that's it. Um, finally, just a reminder because there are some of you who did not follow instructions. If you will not submit to me that 25, 50, and 70%, I will give it back to you. I will not record that. I'm sorry. So those are that's that's all for for the session today. I hope that uh, I hope that you're ready for your for your output, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Goodbye.